Hello, nerds! Thank you for watching Generally Nerdy. This is your week in Nerddom Movies Edition for the week of November 5th, 2018. Uh, this week in movies is going to be pretty quick. We've got uh, Alien Update, Friday the 13th, Birds of Prey intro. Quiet on the set, rolling. Hi, I am Bitsy Tellick. Hey, I'm Hale Appleman. I'm Walter Kane. I'm Rene Aubergenois. Odo on Deep Space Nine. Michael Dorn, Lieutenant Commander of War, Star Trek The Next Generation. Uh, come and see me and hear me and talk to me and listen to me talk about myself. Hey man, this is Kevin Smith, often considered generally nerdy, and you are listening to what is often considered generally nerdy. On Generally Nerdy. Yeah. You're listening to Generally Nerdy. Generally Nerdy. Generally Nerdy. So I lied a little bit in the intro. Alien 5, not Alien 6. I can read. Uh, <laughs> so Neil Blomkamp, if you'll remember, was going to do the next proper Alien movie um, because Covenant was more a tie-in to the... I don't, I don't know exactly how they number them anymore. I got so confused after a while. But they're still great movies-ish. <laughs> but... <laughs> Back to where we were. Neil Blomkamp, a little while ago, we actually talked about it on the show, uh, was working on a script for a new Alien movie, Alien 5. Uh, no subtitle was released or anything like that, though likely there was a subtitle attached to it. Um, and then was kind of abandoned for multitude of reasons, not the least of which is he got other work. Well... Uh, that script still exists. That script is still in the hands of James Cameron, the guy who makes these movies. And uh, he and Sigourney Weaver have come out recently and have been talking about how much they actually love this script. So, yeah, awesome. Uh, it sounds like they're going to try and get this made once Blomkamp's schedule opens. Uh, he's apparently working on about four or five different things right now, which I've kind of lost track of him for a while, though he is a fantastic... If you haven't seen District 9 or any anything Neil Blomkamp has put out, he was attached to a Halo movie for a while that never actually came to fruition. Um, but yeah, he's he's a he's a really good director, uh, pretty good writer as well. Nothing I nothing really bad to say about Neil Blomkamp. So I can only imagine what he can do with a a universe that is as rich as the Alien universe. Uh, the Xenomorphs are gonna be something special in Neil Blomkamp's hand. Uh, so it sounds like they want him to direct if this movie gets made because Cameron is the guy again that makes these things happen. So. That could be incredible. As we get more updates, we'll definitely be talking about it because they are, like I said, uh, some good freaking movies. And we're moving on next to Friday the 13th. So there's a little story here. Um, we haven't seen a whole lot of Friday the 13th uh, in recent years. And, and there's a reason. Actually, the last time we saw Jason Voorhees was Freddy vs. Jason. And then ever since, the original writer of the original two movies, I believe is what he wrote, and then the produce, one of the producers for those movies have been in a legal battle over the rights to the movies. And that legal battle recently was completed, it had come to an end. Victor Miller is the producer, and he won the rights to the franchise name Friday the 13th. Sean Cunningham was the writer, was the writer, and he won the rights to the Jason Voorhees character. So, that's the real quick uh, Reader's Digest version, super abbreviated, uh, that brings us, that's everything you really need to know for this. The, <laughs> the news bit is uh, uh, LeBron James's production company has brought on Victor Miller to produce a reboot of the Friday the 13th franchise. Since they don't own the rights to Jason Voorhees, but they do own the rights to Mrs. Voorhees somehow, which is a very weird, even makes the situation even weirder, they're, they're going to do a reboot, and by from, from what it looks like, their reboot is not going to have Jason in it. 
which isn't necessarily unheard of because the first movie doesn't really have Jason in it. The killer is the mother, Mrs. Voorhees. Spoiler alert, I guess. Um, that being said, every other movie in the franchise has focused on Jason Voorhees. So... They're just trying to not make... I just don't understand this. Why Why would you not play nice? You're going to make the money if you play nice with one another. If you're greedy bastards, then you're not going to make... This is going to be crap. <laughs> There's no two ways around it. I don't care how much money LeBron James can put into this. I don't care if he is Jason Voorhees or is the new killer, I guess. Uh, uh, Teddy Voorhees. I don't know what they're going to do with it. It doesn't matter because it's not going to be Jason, and therefore everyone is going to hate it. All of the fans are going to hate it anyway. Critics are whatever. So that that's that's where it sits. Uh, they're they're planning on making this uh, without. I duh, we're going to move on because that just starts to hurt my brain after too long. Uh, we got a couple of updates on. Birds of Prey to talk about next. Uh, Ewan McGregor has signed on to be the villain, who we talked about a few weeks ago, is going to be Black Mask for this movie. And they are officially going for an R-rated movie. This this script that they have with Black Mask is... They're, they're going the whole nine yards, effectively. If that does well, then that could potentially spell an R rating for the Suicide Squad sequel, and maybe even uh, the Batman movie, which is still in the works and is still potentially going to be starring Ben Affleck next year. Uh, they're going to go into production next year. Affleck is in renegotiations now that he is out of uh, the uh, whatever treatment. And I, I, I hope, I hope this movie does well because there is still the slimmest possibility that there could be a united uh, DC Extended Universe. Uh, and ba effectively every movie they release, that it is going to, it's going to hinge on that. And the more badly they do, the less likely it's going to happen. So I hope for th that sake, for the sake of having a really awesome Batman cinematic universe, that this... Birds of Prey movie does very well, but and with you and McGregor attached to it, th it's more likely because he's a fantastic actor. So that's going to be pretty awesome. Uh, that's all we've got there. Next, we're moving on to Night of the Living Dead. We are finally going to get the proper George A. Romero sequel to the 1968. Yes, the 1968 classic. Uh, a sequel script to that movie was originally written in uh, 69, I believe. It might have been 70 was when it was written, but it never actually got made because they got into their own legal issues. And then we had the Of the Dead and, and the Living Dead uh, separation for George A. Romero and his partner, uh, whose name escapes me at the moment, and I apologize. So now... Uh, Living Dead Media is a, is a production company who is putting together the funds and the people who can make this sequel happen. Uh, so it's, again, it's written back in the late 60s, early 70s, and is now getting produced, and uh, they don't have a director, there's no casting or anything. It's just really awesome that we're going to see uh, the proper sequel and not all of the other randomness that has come since that movie. So that is... Is fantastic and then we're hitting our last bit of news which is a very very quick bit in the Star Wars realm uh, it is a hundred percent official Boba Fett is canceled uh, they were working on if you'll remember uh, Obi-Wan movie and a Boba Fett movie as well as the Ryan Johnson trilogy and the Jon Favreau TV series which is now happening and is called Mandalorian and is also likely the reason why Boba Fett got canceled and then also the uh, the D.B. Weiss and, and the, the other cat, uh, Game of Thrones, those two guys, they were they are getting their trilogy. And they're starting work on their trilogy as soon as they wrap 
Game of Thrones, which will be uh, very, very soon. Or, uh, as soon as Game of Thrones is done airing, they said they're going to start working on theirs. So we've got a lot of Star Wars in our future, and even in our very near future, because Favreau, we already know, is working on The Mandalorian. Uh, so Boba Fett is going going bye-bye, is going slowly the way of the buffalo. Um, and not so slowly, because it's gone. So... Does that mean, and I'm handing this over to you guys, does that mean that Mandalorian is going to give us Boba Fett? Or do you think Disney just feels that that's enough Mandalorian, they don't need specifically the most famous Mandalorian, uh, they just need a Mandalorian to, to keep that relevant? I'm, I, I'm curious to see what you guys uh, think. I honestly believe that... It, Round, it, if the first season of Mandalorian does well, then in like season two, maybe season three, we will see the rise of Boba Fett. He will have crawled his way out of the Sarlacc pit just like he originally did in the books back when they were still relevant. But that is the end of this week's episode, guys. What did I miss in television news? What should we talk about next week? Let me know in the comments down low. If, though, you want to go deeper into the conversation, jump over to the website, generallynerdy.net. That is the place that you can get all the freebies. You can get the nerd stores to buy your nerdy swag. All of the social media links, everything is over at generallynerdy.net. Or there is a Patreon page, patreon.com slash generallynerdy. Just a dollar a month and you get more content. I, I'm pretty nice to my dollar subscribers. So go over to Patreon and become a patron for just a dollar at patreon.com slash generallynerdy. If you're new to this channel, though, click the subscribe button. If you like this episode, click the like button. If you're falling behind on your nerd news and you want to catch up, click or tap that box right there to the left of my face to do that. But before you click the box, before you visit the website or the Patreon or all of the things or any of the things, guys, always, always remember that if it's generally nerdy, it's probably here.